he's the shove it man. Oh, he's the shove it man. He's gonna shove it. Yeah. He's gonna shove it man. The current champion of the Ring of the Hulk. Whatever the f that means. If you wanna get in the ring with me, get in the ring with me, and I'll make you do the job. I will knock your ass out with a brick. Hit you in the dick. Make you go click. Wild Wild West. New chat. It's time for another tag team on Ring of the Hawk. This video will be a special slap to the gut and a kick to the nut. It's time to see if we can add a new tag team to our small division in Ring of the Hawk, which currently only consists of Air Raid and Generation Me, because they make the girls pee. But first, before the video starts, a quick word from our sponsors today. I apologise in advance. Hey you blubber! Have you ever wished you could soar through the air like the hawk and make the lady squawk like me? Well you should check out my Punch to the Gut specials, only on the Hawk's brand new star dude! These t-shirts have a proven success rate jack to improve your attractiveness by an average of roughly 7.6%. And increase no shrinkage by 14.2%, and that's more than a dead. You don't sell the old new blonde just for men. That turns brown haired potters into someone who looks hotter. But we do have smack back and shove back hats to hide your ugly hair. You should do even to be fair. So if you want to make the ladies care, get yourself some hawk wear. Click the link down where? Down there. But don't just take the hawk's word for it, Jack. Here are some words from Brother Peace. Before shopping with the hawk, he was just Brother Piss. But now at night, it's him who's giving your mama a kiss. If you love Marky D and Ring of the Hawk, you need to go to the Hawk Store. The Hawk Store. The Hawk Store. And if you don't, you're a whore. Even if you're a massive fatty, you can still buy one. So, go to the Hawk Store. If you don't, you're a whore. While you're at it, cop one of the old new Fly to Graceland World Tour shirts as we fly to 100k subscribers, Jack! Celebrate that you are responsible for helping Hawkamania grow! Plus it's a pretty nice shirt to show! The person responsible for making the Hawk talk today is I Am Jack. He's asked me to make a video on Mark Jindrak who had almost 100 matches, so obviously he doesn't qualify. So I thought I'd focus on his short-lived tag team today. I say short-lived, but the team lasted around 8 months, starting in 2003. And of course... If you know a wrestler, who can do the J-O-B to the H-J-W-K any night, any day, ha ha! Shove their name in the comments, Jack! Alright, alright, Jindrak and Cade, they had the potential, but then it started to fade. So it's the team of Mark, Jindrak and Garrus and Cade. No idea what to expect from this one, so let's just get cracking, otherwise I'm slacking. A small bit of backstory first, Jindrak was in WCW right at the end, and he was a two-time tag champion with Sean O'Hare. He came over to WWF during the Invasion storyline, but only competed in a couple of matches before heading off to Developmental. The game and Ric Flair were busy creating their Evolution faction, and it was going to be Orton and Batista who were joining them. Unfortunately, there were delays due to injuries. Batista was so injured that he was actually replaced in Evolution by one of our guys today, Mark Jindrak. Everyone already knows all of this, so I'll shut up, but he was even in some of the original footage filmed for Evolution. Then Triple H had him kicked out of the group because he was too immature, annoying, and a bad influence on Randy Orton, who was his best friend in the wrestling business at the time. Lance Cade's backstory is a lot less interesting, although he was trained by Shawn Michaels. I should probably throw this out here before we get too far into this, but this guy is actually dead. He passed away at age 29 from an overdose. That's insanely young. This guy doesn't even get talked about that much. And his partnership with Mark Jindra never gets talked about. People seem to only remember the tag team he had with Trevor Murdoch where he was Lance Cade. And he had some success in this team capturing the tag belts thrice and it sure was nice. Both of our guys today were in their early 20s when the WWE decided to put them together as a team, and they already had a few matches on WWE TV under their belts at this time, but nothing impressive. Match 1, Raw, World Tag Team Title Match. Okay, starting off with some real intention today then. The World Tag Team Champions Rene Dupree and Sylvian Grenier versus Jindrak and Cade, who look like generic creator wrestlers. Cade scores the first knockdown of a shoulder block, then he hits a second one that sends one of the Frenchmen to the outside. Two frogs cuddle on the outside for a little while, so Cade hits them in the back for drop kick. Back in the ring, our guys hit double drop kicks, and then Mark Jindrak hits a solo one. There's drop kicks for everyone. Cade's doing well when he hits a bulldog, 
Then he hits an atomic drop which causes the French guys to crash into each other. It looks so stupid. The French guys want to use their flag as a weapon so the Dudley boys stop them, but the match carries on. Jindrak hits another couple of drop kicks. Then he springs to the top and crashes back down on the French car of a clothesline. Wow, this guy flies well for a guy his size. The Red Squad then hit a drop kick into a spine buster combination. They want to do it again but it gets broken up. Then the Frenchies hit their double team slam on Jindrak to end it. Man, they came close. A good competitive debut, this one. This could be a good video, to be fair. The debut's a C. Match 2. You know it's the Matt Millicent. Rodney Mack and Mark Henry with a moustache, with Theodore Long, versus Cade and Jindrak, who still look generic, but they no longer match. Rodney starts out with a knee to the gut, but then Cade starts attacking him with a drop kick. Mack quickly turns him inside out of a clothesline. Cade then fights him off and hits a back drop. Then Jindrak gets in and nails his own drop kick. Then he does an atomic drop and springs from the top and hits that clothesline that he did in the last match. Unfortunately, Mark Henry's been sat at home for months doing absolutely nothing at this point and he's got a lot of energy tonight. Jindrak tries to spring off the top on top of him, but Henry catches him and then wham, slams him into the mat with the world's strongest slam. Game over. It went about two minutes and it wasn't exactly pretty apart from Mark Henry's catch at the end. I give it a D. Match three, six man tag. Triple H, Ric Flair, Randy Orton versus Cade, Jindrak and Maven. AKA the world's most generic team possible. Jindrak tries to take the game down with a clothesline, but he refuses to go down. Not only are they a generic looking team, but they're also all known for their drop kicks. Garrus and Cade gets isolated for ages. Eventually he counters a sleep of a back suplex. He follows up with a bulldog on the game and then Maven comes into the match. Cade takes Orton out with a back elbow. Jindrak then finally does something as he flies from the top with a clothesline. Then there's a ref bump or Earl Hebner fell over, I'm not sure. Maven hits a top rope drop kick, but the ref's out. Triple H then nails Maven with the pedigree, and the referee wakes up to count the pin. Wow, Cade and especially Jindrak did absolutely nothing in this one. If this match was a person, I'd punch them square in the gut. It's an ass. Before the next match, La Resistance catch our guys playing video games backstage and make fun of them for it. Five years earlier than Scott Steiner was doing it to the guys in the TNA X division. In the locker room, grab your joystick, play your video games, Look at your comic books! They then discuss World War II. This was a weird segment. Match 4, six man tag. Rob Conway, Sylvain Grenier, and Rene Dupree, La Resistance versus Cade, Jindrak, and Maven, the world's most generic team possible. The French guys use a flag to take out Garrus and Cade. It's weird that Cade gets isolated again and Jindrak does absolutely nothing. He gets Maven into the match at the end who beats up all three of the French guys on his own. You know, Maven seems to get a lot of hate nowadays, but he's far more well-rounded than any of the guys in this matchup. Jindrak jumps from the top with a clothesline. Then Kane and Jindrak hit the Spinebuster dropkick combination to put away Rob Comrie. It was short and nothing happened. They're all generic and boring. They're all very good at dropkicks though. It's a D. Match 5. Ric Flair and Randy Orton versus Cade and Jindrak. Even their entrance music's generic. Orton and Cade start out together, but then Orton catches him with a dropkick. Jindrak then gets into the ring to fight against his former best mate. He floats over him in the corner, but Orton catches him and closes him down straight away with a clothesline. Then Jindrak starts doing about a million drop kicks until he misses one. Ric Flair tries to go for the figure four, but Jindrak reverses it into a pin, but Orton breaks the pin up. Cade comes into the match and hits a big shoulder block from the top, which almost beats Randy Orton. Randy then does fight back with a cross bat breaker. In the end, Cade hits a bulldog and he manages to tag Jindrak in, but the crowd are in complete silence. Jindrak hits a couple of back body drops. He then follows up with a double clothesline from the top, but it doesn't look very good. Cade and Jindrak then take out Flair with a Spinebuster dropkick combination. Orta then hits the sneaky RKO on Jindrak and Flair ends up winning the match, although I'm not sure how much he knew about it. It was better than the last match, but it's still not a C. It's yet another D. Before the next match, HBK tries to motivate the young guys, but he only seems to really care about his former trainee, Garrison Cade. Look how left out poor Jindrak looks. It's not the strongest promo in the world. It is worth pointing out, however, here that Garrison Cade has blonde hair, just like Slapnut's Jeff Jarrett. Double J, Jeff Jarrett. Match six, Jindrak and Cade versus Ric Flair and Randy Orton, accompanied by Batista. Jindrak scores a big time knockdown and then Cade takes his turn with Orton. Cade floats over, but Orton floors him with the clothesline like the last match. Flair comes in and batters Cade for a while and he drops the knee. Orton then hits a drop kick on Cade and gets a two count. Jindrak gets the tag and he beats up both men on his own. He takes out Nature and Autumn with a couple of drop kicks. 
Flair thinks he's then got the match won, but then a wild maven appears and he does something, and Jindrak has won the match. He just pinned Ric Flair. Big time win for the young guys. Evolution are bad losers, so Batista beats them all up. A short, ugly, clunky match, but at least they beat Evolution, so it's a D. This could be the start of a push for them. Surprisingly, their mic time continued, or at least Garrus and Cades did, but they're still just as generic as they come. Match 7, non-tag title match, Bubba Ray and Devon versus Cage and Jindrak. Mark Jindrak actually starts out this match, but Devon takes him out straight away. Cade comes in and hits an elbow for a two count before Devon also takes him out. Bubba's now in the match and Cade takes out Bubba with a cross body. Cade's mouth somehow gets busted open, but they all seem to be friends here. Cade hits a big time shoulder block off the top for a two count. Jindrak then takes out Devon Dudley with a drop kick as the youngsters isolate Devon Dudley. Cade and Jindrak hit the drop kick spinebuster combination, but Bubba breaks up the pin at the last second. Cage attempts a top rope elbow drop on Devon Dudley, but he misses. Bubba then starts going nuts and he hip tosses Jindrak on top of Cade. Bubba is boxing Cade and then suddenly, completely randomly, Scott Steiner appears at the top of the ramp and he's pressing Stacey Keebra above his head. The Dudleys are distracted, as any normal person would be. Cade hits a clothesline and makes the cover for the free. This match had a good intensity and it was fairly enjoyable to watch. It's a C. Match 8, Rene Dupree and Rob Conway versus Jindrak and Cade. The two red boys batter the French boys and send them out of the ring. Cade then randomly gets a mic and starts insulting the French guys and says tonight they're dedicating the match to the American troops. Cade sounds a bit like a prepubescent girl. He sounds like I do. Jindrak hits a big jumping punch. I'm pretty sure he taught Roman Reigns how to do this one. It doesn't have much effect though as Rob Conway hits a hurricanrana. Jindrak takes him out of a top rope clothesline. The French guys start cheating. Rene Dupree then tries to hit a bulldog, but Jindrak reverses it into a back suplex. Cade then gets the tag and he nails a nice clothesline that should have ended the match. Then they hit the drop kick into the spine buster and it's over anyway, so it doesn't matter what I think. This one was actually decent too. There's been a bit of a better intensity to the matches recently. It's another C. Match 9, World Tag Team Title Match. The champions Bubba and Devon versus Cade and Jindrak. I have to say, I honestly think Cade has more ability than Jindrak, he just has more character. Bubba beats up both the youngsters, but Devon doesn't do quite as well. Bubba then interferes and whips Cade from the outside and throws him across the ring so Devon can hit a power slam. Cade almost causes an upset by rolling up Devon, and then Devon randomly slaps him and rolls him up to end the match. It went about two minutes, so what was the whole push for? It was anticlimactic. Cade says that the Dudleys cheated and tells the ref to show the footage of the cheating. They demand a rematch, but nothing happens. This one didn't go well for them. It's an ass. Oh, man! So Cade and Jindrak now seem to be playing the characters of whiny hills. I'm sure that'll help get them over. Match 10, Cade and Jindrak versus Val Venus and Lance Storm. Cade and Jindrak jump the brown-haired boys before the bell. The crowd are in complete silence. Cade and Jindrak hit a double suplex on Lance Storm. The Canadian Lance Storm then hits a drop kick from the top and he brings Val into the match. Venus is in a bad mood and he throws Cade out of the ring and then he gets a two count on a full Nelson slam. He also hits a power bomb on Jindrak, but the match still isn't over. Then Jindrak randomly rolls up Val Venus and it's over in about two minutes. Jindrak just isn't good. I'm sorry, but can you imagine if this guy had ended up in evolution? Triple H made the right call even if it wasn't actually about his wrestling ability. But it's not even just about that. He's just boring. Oh, he doesn't have any character whatsoever. It's an S. Match 11, Armageddon 2003. First pay-per-view for these guys. Took a while. Tag title match. Tag team turmoil. It's basically just a tag team gauntlet match. Our team are third in the match and they immediately cheat and roll up the hurricane. Val Venus and Storm are next in. Jindrak has a good exchange with Val Venus until they come to blows. Storm and Cade then try to compete whilst the crowd chant boring at Lance Storm. Storm is being weird and he tries a springboard so Jindrak smacks him one but somehow it's still not a free. Val Venus then comes into the match for the power game but he can't get the win. He comes close again with a powerbomb on Jindrak. Then Cade and Jindrak cheat to eliminate Val Venus. Next out is the Dudley boys who are the tag team champions. It's pretty boring but Cade does miss a top rope elbow drop. Bubba squashes Cade and Jindrak together in the corner. Cade then throws Bubba into the steps whilst Jindrak almost rolls up Devon. Mark Jindrak then misses a drop kick and the Dudleys hit the 3D to eliminate our guys. Cade is a bad loser so he attacks the Dudleys. Jindrak can't even manage to hit a drop kick now, he's really gone downhill. This match is eventually won by Ric Flair and Batista. Flair doesn't even want to celebrate with his partner though, so it wasn't worth it. Our guys did okay, it was just boring, it's a D. They aren't developing or doing anything new. Match 12, three months later, the Hurricane and Rosie versus Cade and Jindrak. 
The hurricane almost pins Cade straight away. To be honest, it's really boring, and if it wasn't for the hurricane, I would have fallen asleep. Cade hits a bat breaker when the ref isn't looking, which is at least a new move for this episode. Rosie hits the Samoan drop on Cade, which I was completely okay with. And then suddenly it's over as Rosie takes a fist to the head from the top rope. What is that, his new finisher or something? A fist to the head? It's Shut Ash. It! If this gets much more boring, I'll be in bed. Match 13, eight-man tag. Cade, Jindrak and La Resistance versus Booker T and RVD with their horrendously bad joint theme music and the Dudley boys. Our guys mostly stay out of the match, but Cade does hit a DDT on RVD. No Job Rob kicks Jindrak in the face. It's weird that Jindrak never does anything athletic anymore. I wonder if he was told to stop. RVD kicks Jindrak again and then he tags Booker T in. The book man then makes short work of the entire team. Booker hits the bookend on Jindrak, but the pin is broken up. One of the French guys then hits Booker from the outside, and then Mark Jindrak scores a clothesline and somehow beats Booker T. It's not even like it looked impressive, but hasn't he pinned Booker T and Ric Flair at this point? Jesus Christ, it's a D. Match 14, final match. WrestleMania XX, four way for the tag titles. La Resistance versus Cade and Jindrak versus the Dudleys versus the champions Booker and RVD. As it's WrestleMania, you might think they'd try something different and go above and beyond, but they don't, they hardly do a thing. It's not even worth talking about this one. Booker and RVD put away Rob Conway to retain the belts. You know what? Ugh, I'm glad it's over now. It's time for me to get some sleep and never have to watch the team as boring as this ever again. Because if I do, I might slip into a coma. Look, they were as generic as you come. Jindak didn't seem to improve at all. I can't imagine this guy ever being an evolution. At least Cade cut promos and showed some personality. But I can see why this team didn't go anywhere. So no, I won't be signing them for the Ring of the Hawk roster. Because we're all about excitement on the show and these guys blow. I don't want any fans to be put to sleep, so let me throw these guys in the turd heap. And if you don't agree with that, I'll crush you with my jeep. 